This is the OpenSpot 2, which is made by Shark RF. Shark RF is a small company of amateur radio operators who make products for other amateur radio operators. Before we get into the video, I do have to tell you that Shark RF sent me this product to review at no cost to myself, but they have absolutely no input on what I say about it. If I wanted to, I could say it's a terrible product, but I'm not going to because I actually really like it. The OpenSpot 2 is an internet to radio gateway, more commonly known in amateur radio as a hotspot. A hotspot allows you to access digital radio networks such as Brandmeister, Phoenix in the UK, DMR+, TGIF, YSF and FCS rooms, D-Star reflectors and more, all over the internet. The hotspot transmits the signal on a frequency of your choice on the 70cm amateur band. You can choose between the available digital modes so that your radio can receive the signal and transmit back in the same mode. When you transmit into the hotspot, it uses Wi-Fi to send it over the internet to the radio network you're connected to. And then when someone talks back, it receives it over the internet and transmits in your chosen digital mode to your radio. That means you do need an internet connection to use the open spot, but it doesn't mean you can only use it in a static location. Most smartphones allow tethering, or quite confusingly in this case, a mode they also call hotspot. In the context of smartphones, the hotspot mode creates a Wi-Fi network, which allows you to share the phone's internet connection. If you connect other devices, such as the OpenSpot, to this Wi-Fi network, then they'll be able to access the internet via your smartphone. So you can do this and use the OpenSpot wherever you have coverage on your phone. Keep in mind that this does use up your data allowance if you're on contract, but the amount of data used by the OpenSpot is pretty small. The OpenSpot 2 can access all the usual networks and protocols that other hotspots support, and can crosslink between those with compatible vocoders. That means you can talk on DMR, Fusion and NXDN with a radio that natively supports only one of those standards. You can't natively talk between D-Star and the modes I just mentioned because the vocoder is different, but there are some talk groups or reflectors that connect the modes by transcoding the audio. To put it simply, that means they convert the audio between the two formats. But to do that, you need access to both of the vocoders, which is why the hotspot can't do this itself. The open spot comes with the appropriate cable needed to power it, which is the new standard connector, USB-C on one end, and the normal USB-A on the other. They also provide a power adapter with a range of different plugs for different regions but I'm using it on USB power from my laptop right now. That actually shows how little power this unit uses. I couldn't get my Pi Star based hotspot to work when powering it from the laptop because it wasn't putting out enough current. But this thing seems to work absolutely fine. Now you might be wondering why I care about the power usage of the open spot, but it's actually important if you're taking it out and want to use it off a USB power bank. With a low power usage, it will last a very long time before the battery runs out. The LED on the front flashes or pulses in different colours to let you know what's happening. It might take you a little while to memorise which colour means what, but once you do, it's an easy way to see what the open spot is doing at a glance. The open spot is missing the screen that's found on some other hotspots, but you can use the web interface from a smartphone, computer or tablet if you want to see the call sign of who is talking along with lots more detailed information like the bit error rate, digitter Q and the log of network activity. Probably my favourite thing about the OpenSpot 2 though is that it's simple and convenient to set up and use. Since I got the OpenSpot 2, I've pretty much stopped using my Pi Star hotspot just because this thing is so much faster and more convenient. I usually control it through my phone, which is really easy with the Shark RF Link website. You can also add this to your home screen on some phones, which lets you use it like an app. 
Once you've connected the OpenSpot to Wi-Fi for the first time, it will automatically connect whenever you turn it on, and you can use the SharkRF link website to help you connect to it. You just type in the UID, which is on the sticker on the back of the OpenSpot, and click connect. It can also remember the UID, so you don't have to type it in every time. That takes you to the dashboard, where you can see the status, change mode, or change which network you're connected to, or change any of the other settings. SharkRF also offer really good support for this product. They have support forums on their website, and it looks like they answer all questions. I like how the support is public, so you can look and see if anyone else had the same issue as you, and how they solved it. Now, this wouldn't be an honest review if I didn't mention the one significant issue with this product, and that is the price. At the time of making this video, it's being sold for 199 euros, which is quite a lot more than other hotspots. I'm planning to do a more in-depth comparison video of the OpenSpot 2 versus the PiStar hotspots. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. If you have both of these, please leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on the advantages and disadvantages of each one. If you enjoyed this video, then I'd appreciate it if you clicked on the like button down below. And if you want to watch more content like this, then click on my channel name, also down below, and have a look at some of my previous videos.